What's going on guys, Sasuke the Savage here and today I'm going to make a brief video comparing Armin and Erwin. Of course I'm talking about Attack on Titan. Now I wanted to wait to make this video so that the anime could cover a certain part because I wanted to ask the question, did Armin deserve the serum? And that's going to be an actual poll question when I get to it so be sure to answer that question. And I wanted to have these observations, I guess you can call them, because when I went back to reread Attack on Titan, I wanted to see the plans that Erwin and Armin came up with. So that will be at the end of the video, but let's get right into it with the comparison. Talking about Armin and Erwin, what they both have in common, just on the surface level, is that they're blonde, they're in the scouts, and they're both intelligent. And just going a bit deeper by talking about their motives on a personal level, Erwin wanted to prove his father's theory right, which was that there was humanity outside the walls. And then you had Armin who wanted to see the ocean, but both ultimately wished for the preservation of humanity and they were prepared to sacrifice their own personal hopes and dreams to see that through. Albeit, it took Erwin a pep talk from Levi to become truly committed to giving up his hopes and dreams. So with that in mind, you can see that Armin is more selfless. And with that last statement, I'll let that segue me into talking about the other differences between Armin and Erwin. As I said before, Armin and Erwin are both highly intelligent. They are Attack on Titan's token geniuses, but in divergent ways. You have Armin who to me is more of a creative thinker, one who can make unique plans that very few people can replicate or even fathom. So while you have Armin who is more imaginative and thinks outside the box, I think Erwin oddly enough is pretty pragmatic. And I say it's oddly because even though I think Erwin comes up with strategies that no one else can create, it's mostly due to the fact that Erwin can be cold when dealing with the lives of people. Now, it's not like Erwin completely lacks sympathy, but many times in the series, his actions have directly caused the deaths of many of his own men by design. But because he has abandoned the side of his humanity and become a devil, as many people have said in the series, he's able to scheme with virtually no limits. So to conclude, Include this segment, I think Armin is naturally smarter than Erwin. However, Erwin's experience and lack of morals at times put him in contention with Armin's intellect. And for further measure, I'll use a trash ass fighting analogy. To me, Armin is like a fighter who is young but naturally gifted, and Erwin would be a fighter who's learned techniques through battles and fights dirty to have an edge. So because of Erwin's lack of character in some aspects, he is comparable to Armin, although he has more natural talent. Yeah, I know that's a trash analogy and it's not perfect, but I hope you see what I mean. Now, the one defining character trait that clearly separates Armin and Erwin is leadership. In this category, Erwin is undoubtedly superior to Armin. Erwin could lead men into suicide charges where the men were fully aware of the hopelessness of it and the futility, and he would do it vanguard, front and center. Erwin was the man who was the face of the scouts, and from the fact that he got Levi's loyalty and respect alone should show you how much cachet Erwin holds. On the other hand, you have Armin, who isn't impressive as a leader. The one time Armin became a leader by proxy was in the return to Shinganshina arc where he had to come up with a plan to defeat Berthal. Eventually, he did come up with a strategy, but not before he fell into despair and had to defer to John. Again, this was Armin's only real opportunity to be in command since he doesn't hold high rank in the scouts, but that doesn't change the fact that Erwin is a better guide than Armin. Erwin's charisma and his ability to skyrocket morale is a skill that Armin doesn't possess yet and might not ever. The last character trait that ties Erwin and Armin together is that they're both equally great con men. Erwin has deceived his own men on numerous occasions, while Armin has a track record of trickery, trying to lure Andy underground by playing to her emotions, making her thought believe Andy was being tortured, tricking his old, dusty nigga into thinking that he was Historia, and most recently, making Elena believe that he believes in a euthanasia plan. So taking everything I said into account, I do believe that Floach 
Hanji, and the majority of the military were right in wanting to revive Erwin over Armin. Now, there's no knock against Armin because he is a genius level talent. It's just a testament to how great Erwin was. And we have to remember that we as readers are more privy to the potential that Armin has. We're inside his thoughts, so we know what he's capable of and other people may not. But that's the end of that. Now I'm gonna talk about the plans that both Armin and Erwin have come up with as of chapter 118 starting with Armin. Chapter eight, the plan to use the Roll Titan to fight other Titans to make it to the Supply HQ. Chapter nine, the plan to kill the Titans inside the Supply Room by using the trainees to shoot their rifles simultaneously while having the top cadets go for the kill. Mikasa, Reiner, Bethalt, Annie, John, Connie, and Sasha. Chapter 11, Armin's plan to convince the garrison that Eren is not a threat to humanity, pitching the fact that Eren's titan form killed other titans and that the titans saw Eren as prey. Now, the plan didn't work, but that's because this dude was a douchebag. Thank you, Pixis, for keeping the show alive. Chapter 23, Armin deduces that the female titan is a human along with the colossal and armored titan and predicts what she's after. Or should I say, who she's after. Chapter 23 again, putting on the hoods so that Annie cannot kill them since she would have to see the faces of the person that she's searching for first. Chapter 37, the night operation to take back Wall Maria with Aaron's hardening ability. Chapter 42, Armin figures out that Reiner is the traitor after Hanji gets the report back on their backgrounds. Chapter 49, Armin lies and manipulates Berthault into thinking that Annie is being tortured so that he would lose his composure and that Erwin would have an opportunity to free Eren. Chapter 64, Armin's smokescreen plan against Kenny Swad while pointing out the weakness of their weapons, which is that is not good in close range. Chapter 82, Armin uses himself as bait while also feigning Aaron's exhaustion so that Aaron can take down Berthault. And lastly, chapter 104, the rescue plan for Aaron and Marley. Moving on to Erwin. Chapter 21, Erwin makes the information of Aaron's basement public to lure the traitor in. Chapter 26, Erwin captures the female Titan in the forest. Chapter 31 and chapter 32, Erwin has a plan to capture Annie by luring her underground. Now, this didn't work, but it still was a good ass plan. Chapter 49, using a horde of titans to stop Reiner and Berthold in an attempt to save Eren. Chapter 61, the plan to overthrow the government by lying about the breach of Wall Rose to expose the true colors of those in power. Chapter 67, using the people of Orvud to lure in Rod Race's Titan. Chapter 71, in the flashback of Shades, we see that Erwin was the first one to propose the long distant enemy scouting formation that we've seen since the beginning of Attack on Titan. And lastly, chapter 80, Erwin uses the remaining survey courts to launch a suicide charge as a diversion so Levi can take down the Beast Titan. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for the video. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe. Sasuke the Savage, out.